Okay, so if you really want to understand algebra, you must know how to solve equations. Now, in algebra, there's all different sorts of equations, and the first type of equation you must master is a linear equation. And uh, this particular equation right here is an example of a linear equation. Now, I want to solve this thing in a second, but I want to see if you can solve this. Let's see how much you know about solving linear equations. So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, and then I'm going to walk through the solution step by step. And I'm going to be very precise about this, and I'm going to kind of give you a uh, recipe or an algorithm, a procedure, any kind of word you want to use, just basically a step-by-step -step process so you can solve any linear equation that comes your way. And just to be clear here, the problem is 6 times 2m minus 1, and this is equal to 8 times m plus 3. All right, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. Hopefully you had a chance to do it. And the correct answer is M is equal to 15 over two. Uh, some of you may have converted this improper fraction into the mixed uh, number uh, fraction seven and one half. So both of these answers is correct. And I'm going to tell you right now, this would be the preferred way to write your solution. I will explain why later. All right. But uh, if you ended up with either one of these uh, answers, uh, that is fantastic. We must celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars so you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic linear equations. Boy, that just sounds so fancy. They'll be like, wow, you must be so smart. But uh, anyways, again, this is a linear equation. Now, before we kind of get um, going into the solution here, let's just talk about what a linear equation is real quick, right? I am using fancy terms. So that word is linear. That's what I'm saying, okay? Now, what is the root word of this word? Well, the root word is line, okay? So these type of equations, linear equations, could be expressed as lines on graphs. But uh, effectively, what makes an equation a linear equation, more or less, is that the variables here that we're dealing with, and in this, uh, this particular case, we're dealing with one variable, but the variables, the highest power, is one okay we're not dealing with anything like m squared this would make this a quadratic equation which is a whole different ball game so anytime you are dealing with a variable to the first power okay it's likely a linear equation all right so let's go ahead and get started on what to do and let me give you a basic kind of uh, recipe to follow so here is uh, this linear equation and there's all different sorts of type of situations you can have. There's certainly much more involved than this equation, but this is a good starter problem for us. So in any linear equation, you kind of want to follow this uh, procedure. So the first thing is you want to see if there's any distributive property situations. That would mean like a, a number outside of a parenthesis with like a variable or some difference inside. This is a, a distributive property situation, which of course we um, have. So that's uh, where you want to start. Okay, so you're going to start here. Now, uh, once you, you finish with all your distributive property situations, now some equations don't have a, a distributive property scenario. No problem, but you're going to be scanning and looking for these. So uh, if it does, you're going to take care of these um, situations. And then when you're done, you're going to combine like terms and basically simplify the left and right hand side of the equations. So you're going to get them nice and tidy. Make sure they're as simple as possible, independent from one another. Now, once you've done that, you need to move all your variable terms, anything with like a, an X, in it to the left hand side and all your numbers things like 11 or whatnot, all, all those numbers to the right-hand side. So we're going to have to take any numbers that are on the right-hand side. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, any numbers that are on the right or any variable terms, excuse me, 
on the right hand side and move them over to the left hand side any numbers on the left we're going to have to move them over to the right and that's going to require uh, taking some steps and then once we get to this point we'll finish up by solving the, uh, uh, what would be a one-step equation but this is I don't want to kind of overcomplicate uh, you know the procedure here I'm just kind of giving you some general guidance all right so if you understand what I just said you're like oh okay I get that well, maybe you want to go ahead and try the prom again if you didn't get the correct answer. Now, I am going to say, okay, the key to being successful in mathematics, in algebra, and you have to write this as a language, okay? When I mean step by step, that's what you have to do step by step. In other words, one step, take another step, take another step, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And when it comes to solving equations, generally, if your solution kind of looks like an ice cream cone shape, in other words, you know, you have a big mess here and you're just kind of whittling it down all the way to your final solution, then you'll be good to go. Okay, so if you don't want to write these steps, basically, you know, you're likely going to get the problem wrong and your teacher very well, even if you got the right answer, may not give you credit if you don't show your work, right? So just get in the habit of writing these uh, steps nice and neat and clearly. And the best way to do that or to improve um, and being neat and structured is to go slow, okay? Over time, you'll get better. But I'll talk about this as we uh, start this prompt. So let's go ahead and get going here. And if there's anything that you don't understand, like the distributive property, well, you know where to, uh, you know what part of the problem uh, you'll need to work on, right, in terms of solving an equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off. We have two distributive property situations, all right? So we have a number outside of a summer difference and a number outside of a summer difference here. So we have to apply the distributive property. So the way this works is the following. This number, 6, for this example, is going to get multiplied to this 2. Okay, so 6 times 2 is what? 12. So we have a 12m here, and then this 6 gets multiplied to that 1. So 6 times 1 is a 6, so we have 12m minus 6. Okay, this sign stays the same. Okay, so over here, we have this 8. This gets multiplied to m, so that's 8m. And then this 8 gets multiplied to this 3, which, of course, is 24. And that sign stays uh, the same right there. So the distributive property is kind of one of these areas where a lot of um, students um, typically, will, uh, you know, at least beginning algebra students, make a lot of mistakes. I'll tell you, you know, of course, after grading maybe 10 uh, million uh, different, you know, homework, quizzes, etc. Well, maybe not that many, but you get the idea. I've seen so much math work you know, uh, come my way. Of course, I'm sure I made all these mistakes as well, but I want to tell you what is a very common mistake that I've seen with math students. So they'll go like, oh, six times two, that's 12M, and then they'll just write a one right here. They'll put a one, they'll forget to multiply this number to the next terms, okay? I, I don't know why uh, some students do that, but it just seems to be a, kind of a classic uh, algebra mistake. But you got to be concentrating and focused when you're using the, uh, the distributive property. It's very easy to make a mistake. Okay, so another tip here, once you apply, uh, you know, or do anything, you know, um, you know, in the algebra and mathematics, once you've taken a step, what you want to do before you take the next step is look at your results. So you'll be like, okay, 12M minus 6, da, 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 doesn't make sense. You're like, okay, I'm, you know, you're just kind of basically grading yourself. You're looking to catch any errors right here. Because as you continue on, if you just made a mistake, everything you do from this point forward will be wrong. So you want to try to catch errors, you know, um, you know, at every step, at every level. Okay, that's how you become a successful mathematician. All right, so let's go ahead and move on. And our next step here is to simplify the left and right hand sides of the equations. Okay. Well, there's no like terms over here. In other words, 12m, a number is nothing I could do. It's as simple as possible. Over here, same thing. But if there was, in other words, if there was another number or another variable term with m in it, we can combine like terms. But again, you know, not every equation is going to have every single scenario in it. Okay, so these um, uh, sides are pretty simplified. So at this point, we need to be thinking about getting all of our variables to the left and all of our numbers to the right. Now, you can see I have some work down here in a second. Now, the way we want to do this is just uh, one step at a time, okay? Now, what needs to move to what, uh, you know, what needs to move to what side? What's on the wrong side? Well, this 8m needs to get over here and linked up with this 12m, and this negative 6 will need to move over 
with the number on the right hand side but we're, we're going to just do this one step at a time okay so let's go and do that now and when i show you this format this is the way i'm going to highly suggest you work just like this you want to emulate uh, the way i'm doing this problem okay now there's uh, other ways you can um, uh, see equations being solved uh, other formats if you will where basically the variables written you know at the same line in other words here i'm subtracting a, uh, uh, 8m from both sides sometimes you'll see this where uh, to be like 12m minus 6 minus 8m it's on one line do not do that okay one your paper is not going to be as wide you want to work in a vertical manner all right so at this point we're going to move um, the variable term 8m uh, it's on the wrong side. We're going to move it over to the left-hand side. So the way we're going to accomplish that is we're going to get rid of this 8M on this right-hand side. I'm like, you know what? I don't like you over here, 8M. We have to get rid of you on this side. So how can I get rid of this 8M? Well, easy. I can just subtract an 8M away from it. But remember, in algebra, the golden rule is whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side. Okay, so here I'm going to subtract 8M from both sides of the equation, right? And when I do that, I'm gonna draw a line just like so, and then I'm gonna add down in a column manner. So 12m minus 8m is 4m, negative six plus nothing is negative six, I got my equal sign here, 8m minus 8m is zero, I don't need to write that, and 24 plus zero is 24, but I'm gonna scoot that 24 over here, right next to that equation symbol. Okay, so if you understand what I just did there, well then hopefully you, uh, you're going to kind of understand what I'm going to do next, which of course is to move this uh, 6, this negative 6, over to the other side. Okay, so uh, we're going to do that, but before we do that, I would hope that you would stop and just quickly subscribe to this uh, channel and hit that notification bell. This really helps me, it really helps my channel, okay, which effectively really helps my virtual classroom, okay? In other words, I'm trying to grow my classroom, get as many students packed into there. Uh, the great thing about my classroom is I don't actually have, you know, a physical, you know, classroom, right, which is pretty cool. And I remember teaching, you know, in, in class where there would be like 35 students all packed in there. But, you know, we still got the job done. But in this particular classroom, I have no physical barriers. The only barriers I have is the rate of growth. And when you subscribe, I can get more people that need help in math or just interested in math, my objective is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way, okay? So I definitely appreciate if you can hit that subscribe button. Let's get back to the problem. All right, so as I indicated, what we need to do now is get all our numbers to the uh, right-hand side. So we have four and minus six. I'm like, ah, oh, this six uh, is on the wrong hand side of the equation. So how can I get rid of this minus six on this side of the equation? Well, the, the way to get rid of a minus six is to add six to it, okay? Now, let me kind of um, say something here about what's going on. What we're doing is taking the opposite operation. So in other words, this is negative six. I'm gonna add a six. So you're doing the opposite, right? Minus is plus. And back over here, okay, just to kind of uh, see it again. Here is an, an 8m, but this is positive 8m, so I'm going to do the opposite here, negative 8m. Okay, so uh, if you're kind of unsure on what to do, just think, all right, I want to get rid of this, so it's going to be the opposite operation. So negative 6 plus 6, but again, I'm going to have to add 6 to both sides of the equation, right? That's how I'm going to get rid of this 6 on the left-hand side and get it over to the right-hand side. Okay, so now we're going to add down in a column manner, so 4m plus nothing is 4m. Negative 6 plus 6 is 0. Don't need to write that. Equal sign, 24 plus 6 is 30. All right, so at this point, what we have is what we call a one-step uh, linear equation. Okay, one step. Now, why would it be called one step? Well, there's precisely one step uh, to solve this equation. So let's go ahead and take that one step. And uh, let's just kind of make an observation here, okay? So this is 4 times m, 4 times m. The objective to solve this equation is to get m by itself, okay? This is multiplication, right? So what is the opposite operation of multiplication, right? Well, hopefully you said division, and the opposite operation of division is multiplication. 
for addition, it's subtraction. For subtraction, it's addition. So here, what we're going to do is be like, oh, this is multiplication. So we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 4. Now, another way you can kind of think about this is, all right, I want to get an M or 1M. Okay, 1M is the same thing as M. That's the objective, right? I want to get M on one side of the equation. So if I have a 4 times M, the way I can get uh, an M here is just simply divide whatever this number is by itself because this divided by this is 1, right? So 1 or 1M. So, you know, any way you want to think about this, uh, you know, whatever works for you, you know, is uh, perfectly fine with me as long as you understand what you are doing. And there's different ways you can think about this. Okay, so let's get back to the final solution. So 4 divided by 4 is 1M or M. But again, we're going to divide 4 by both sides of the equation. Okay, I got whatever you do to one side, I got to do to the other side. So 30 divided by 4. So we got 30 over 4. Now, if some of you got to this point right here, I would say pretty good. Matter of fact, I would probably give you a happy face and maybe like an A. Maybe an A minus. It all depends if you have been a good student and been, <laughs> been doing all your homework and you don't talk in class, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, all jokes aside, hey, by the way, let me give you a little tip for some of you math students out there. You want to get on your teacher's good side, okay? <laughs> in other words, they'll give you breaks. Sometimes uh, teachers are were quirky, okay? Sometimes it will take uh, five points off. Other times you might take two points off. It all depends. But anyways, uh, this answer is correct, but right here, okay, you didn't fully simplify your fraction. And most uh, teachers will, you know, dock you a point. They're certainly going to say something. They're not going to be happy with it. So what you have to do, anytime you have a fraction, uh, you know, as your answer, you got to make sure it's fully reduced. And of course, we can reduce 30 over 4, and that is 15 over 2. Now, at the beginning of this video, I stated that you want to leave your final answer as an improper fraction. In other words, if you have an a improper fraction situation like this, as long as it's reduced, you want to stop right here. Okay? I have seen, again, you know, millions of times where a student will have this correct. Okay? They'll have the right answer, and then they take their improper fraction and turn it into a mixed number fraction. Okay? They feel like, oh, I have to do that. And how do we take... Uh, 15 halves and turn it into 7 and a half. Well, you just take 15 and divide it by 2, right? So 2 goes to 15, 7, that's 14, that's 1. So we have 1 half as a remainder. So it's 7 and 1 half. Now, as students take the extra time to do this, to turn their um, answer into a mixed number fraction, first of all, most math teachers uh, should not require that you do that unless they ask uh, specifically, okay? Uh, and typically, at least it's been my experience, that as long as you give them a simplified improper fraction, that is perfectly fine. That is the best way to leave your answer. So, But some students feel compelled that they have to take this extra step. This takes time, all right? And it also, it's an opportunity for you to make a mistake. And I've seen this over and over again. Well, the, uh, the student will have the right answer here, and then they gave me something like 7 and 1 thirds, and then I got to like take minus 10 off, and then it just, it's really, you know, it's not a good situation. The student will be like, you know, why did you do that? You know, I had the right answer. Look, I had that right answer here. I said, yeah, but you turned this in, okay? You turned in the wrong answer. So, listen, uh, you know, my videos, you know, one, I want to, you know, obviously teach you the mathematics, but I also want to give you some real good tips for the for those of you that are students okay uh, so things that if you avoid or if you listen to me okay yeah, we'll really help you out in terms of your exams scores tests grades etc all right now if you need more help with linear equations this is a huge topic and I have many many videos on linear equations on my uh, YouTube channel so you're not going to get better at uh, anything unless you practice. You've got to practice this stuff. But uh, if you want like my formal instruction on this, I would suggest checking out like my pre-algebra or algebra one courses. I'll leave links to those in the description. But uh, with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.